Another West Wing ship jumper, Emma Riley, the White House Communications Chief of Staff, is the latest to head for the door after less than a year in her position. Last week, VP Harris's Communications Chief announced her exit. It comes as approval ratings for the president and the vice president continue to plummet. It's now gotten to the point where administration officials are repeatedly facing questions like this. Has it at all impacted your relationship with the vice president that it seems as if there's this narrative of a rivalry developing between the two of you? No, because she and I are part of a team that is disciplined and uh, doesn't focus on what's uh, obsessing the, the commentators. We're too busy with a job to do. Uh, there's no room to, to get caught up in the parlor games, and uh, I'm proud to be part of the Biden-Harris team. Okay, Mercedes Schlapp, former Trump White House advisor for Strate Strategic Communications and ACU Foundation Senior Fellow, and Kevin Walling, former Biden campaign surrogate, are in focus right now. Good to have you both here today. Mercedes, I'll start with you first. What are we, if anything, expected to make of these exits from the White House as both Biden and Harris continue to sink in the polls? Well, Sandra, I'd like to just start when it came to the Trump White House that first year. There was a lot of change happening, mm -hmm. okay? Fair uh, enough. Especially following those six months, you know, but it does happen. Uh, with that being said, I think there's an enormous amount of stress being placed on the Biden administration right now uh, because of the fact that you're seeing Biden and Harris's approval numbers so low. And also you're seeing the fact that they're facing very big problems. The inflation, that's not going away. Uh, you know, we've seen the fact that they haven't been able to control the situation at the border. And it really gets to a, a point, which is you're seeing two weak uh, lead, leaders right now, that being Biden, that being Harris. So I think it's a big challenge for this administration, especially so early on. Let's remember, it's that first year in office where you have the most political capital and they've lost so much political capital as we have seen uh, because their policies are simply not working and they're being rejected by the American people. Kevin, I think that Mercedes is being fair enough in that, you know, many presidencies in their first year see a lot of changes as you sort of strategize and adjust. But obviously the coincidence here is that that both the president and vice president are sinking in their polls. And when recently asked about this apparent feud, uh, Kamala Harris was asked about in an ABC News interview about the frustration and dysfunction within her office. When she responded to whether she feels misused or underused, she laughed in response. That laughing isn't really a, a answer a question with any sort of certainty. Yes, Andrew, I, I don't think you want to see the vice president legitimizing any of those kind of conversations when it comes to the parlor games that Secretary Buttigieg talked about. I mean, that's the favorite thing in Washington is to pit rivals against one another, whether they be Republicans or Democrats, just to get more reads on uh, articles or, or more views on the screen. And I'm, I'm uh, glad that Mercy pointed out just the, the level of turnover that we see in both Republican and, and Democratic administrations. I think she's absolutely right. She served in the White House at this point. Uh, in the Trump administration, you had a new chief of staff, you had a new uh, Press secretary, new White House communications director, new national security advisor. But keep it to, keep it to the Biden administration, what we're seeing there, though. Because at the same time, this isn't exactly an administration that can tout a lot of accomplishments at this point. Well, and exactly. I mean, that's why I'm on here, Sandra, to talk yeah. about th these uh, administration achievements, because there are a, a great number that we need to tout, and we mm. need to get the word out. That was one of the things I think you're seeing in terms of the frustration with this president, uh, is that he is doing th great things like the American Rescue Plan, like this okay. uh, infrastructure bipartisan bill, and it, we're just not getting the word out about right, it, and well, that's what we need to do The word is out about make inflation and high gas prices, that's for sure. Many believe, meanwhile, that getting critical race theory out of schools was part of the GOP's winning formula this past election day. But some in the media continue to deny that CRT is in school curricula. Watch Virginia Lieutenant Governor-elect Winsome Sears going toe-to-toe -to -toe with CNN's Dana Bash. Listen. You oppose critical race theory being taught in schools, which I should say is not part of Virginia's curriculum. Uh, you did say, though, that the good and the bad of American history should be taught. Well, let me back up. I beg to differ that CRT is not taught. I in didn't fact, say that. I just said it's not in the proof. curriculum, just to be clear. It, it, no, 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 no. It is part of the curriculum. McAuliffe, his state board of education had information on how to teach it, so it's weaved in. So, you know, it's semantics, but it's weaved yeah. in. Mercedes, it makes you wonder if there were any lessons learned <laughs> from that election in Virginia. 
Look, I got to tell you, I've never seen a liberal media so doubling down and these Democrats uh, doubling down on saying on, on being supportive of critical race theory. And, and it's kind of interesting because then they backpedal and they say, well, it's not in the curriculum. But the mere fact is it was the liberal media. It's been the Democrats who have stood on the side of critical race theory, saying that it's a good thing to teach in our schools, keeping the parents out of our education process, which has hurt them tremendously. And yet they still continue to uh, focus on these issues, whether it be the gender, creating gender chaos and confusion in our schools, critical race theories, mass mandates, all of this, which I think the Democrats obviously have not learned uh, their lesson, and they're really suffering going into the midterm elections. Kevin? Well, this Democrat has learned his lesson coming out of Virginia. I want parents to be part of this uh, conversation. To Mercy's point, they absolutely should be involved in conversations about curriculum uh, in this country. And we need to have an honest conversation when it comes to uh, curriculum and what is actually being taught. I think CRT has become a catch-all in this country with any kind of conversation uh, about slavery and race relations. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about what CRT uh, actually is. I think this is the greatest country in the world. I think Mar Mercy and I can agree with that. And we should have an accurate, age-appropriate uh, curriculum that tells our history. We shouldn't whitewash it. We, we shouldn't gloss over slavery and, and the plight of uh, enslaved Americans uh, in this country. Uh, but again, I think CRT has become that catch-all, uh, much to the frustration of Democrats, including myself. All right. CRT uh, is bad, Kevin. It teaches oppressor versus oppression. It creates the fact that white people are evil and should pay the price for slavery of ancestors a long time ago. Uh, it should not be taught in our schools. Right, and quick. I got to tell you, I mean, I, I have five kids and I, I sit with them to learn history with them through their history books. They are teaching about slavery. They are teaching about the wrongs Great. of slavery. That's important. So to Absolutely. insert critical that's race theory is a, a problem. That's important. We appreciate both of you. The conversation will, will continue for sure. Thanks, Kevin and Mercedes. Thanks, Sandra. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.